But I don't have motivation to stay fit because I don't live five minutes away from the beach. But I grew up in a less affluent suburb, so everybody treats me like a crab in a bucket. Negativity, negativity, negativity. We are done tolerating bullshit in our life and we know that we deserve the absolute best. And that's why we're gonna make 2024 an intentional year where we are having the best comebacks of our life. Now to start, let me bring an example of the two people that I mentioned in the video, how to stop being bothered by everything everything, like literally. And those two people are Striver and Acer. Now, if you haven't seen this previous video, you are more than welcome to check it out here. But Striver is that person who is as equally obsessed as any ambitious people in creating success for herself. She does take all the necessary actions each day to move towards her dream life and becomes very disciplined with her approach. Except one thing, in the midst of turning her life around, she keeps these thought patterns that keep sabotaging her decision-making abilities. And the thought look something like this. Why are people so happy for me when I'm lost, chubby and nice? But now that I have clarity in my vision, I know exactly who I am and I have my dream bikini bod. It seems like people are silently wanting me to go back into my shell. It doesn't make sense. And while again, I absolutely agree that the more you level up, the more you'll lose people in your life. But thoughts do emit vibration and vibration, which is caused from your thought patterns, do create your physical reality. So as much as Striver is so determined to make her dream life work, putting in the long hours, grinding to the best of her ability and being the best she can ever be. But she is not disciplined with creating a beautiful and clean inner world. The vibration of anxiety, resentment and bitterness is still hovering all around her, which then makes her more vulnerable to attracting people that reflect the toxicity that she has within herself. As a result of her tumultuous inner state, she then goes on a hamster wheel of repeating the same undesired circumstances that reflect back to her how unworthy unchosen and abandoned she feels. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this. And that's why I want to bring in the second example of Asa. Now on a daily basis, Asa is also obsessed with creating her dream reality, but also very determined to creating a beautiful inner world. While Asa is taking much less action than Striver, she is creating her desired result by effortlessly maintaining a beautiful inner state. Although Asa still puts in the hour to build her dream body, she doesn't need to spend two hours doing cardio or strength training to have her abs because her eating is very disciplined and this applies to every single area of her life although she puts in the hour to do her work but she always has clarity in every single hour that is invested therefore she doesn't procrastinate and on top of that she's attracting all the right people with the version of herself who only gives herself high quality treatments so instead of wondering why aren't people happy for my success Asa is able to instantly accept that this is a part of an old reality that she was once immersed in and it's no longer relevant to her dream self. She knows inherently that most people do not want the best for you or want to see you succeed and that's why she stops associating herself with those people and continues to come back and level up her mindset and emotional stability. In order for you to make the greatest comeback of your life, you are going to embody the characteristics of Asa who in the midst of being in a shitty environment still rises above every single pettiness and creates the exact result that she wants for her life without any resistance. Step one, in this next six months, you are going to commit to cutting ties with your hypocritical self and never go back. That's right. Before you even get out a pen and paper to write your six months resolution, what kind of goals you want to achieve and the steps you must take to get there, you are going to first focus on cutting ties with your hypocritical self. If you want to permanently shift your timeline and be the best that you've ever been, you must be willing to die to your old self. And I truly mean this. There is no point in trying to follow a to-do list if you are still taking all your actions as the old self who is contradictory and is still indecisive with her actions that will then take her 10 steps forward but 15 steps back. From this point onwards, we are not going to bring in our old vibration, thought patterns, feeling state, interpretation of reality, bad attitude, skepticism, or any associations that ties back to your old self. For example, you're not going to craft your to-do list or your vision board saying that you will have your dream body by doing 100 burpees, deadlifting 50 kilograms, running five kilometers, and doing all these things successfully, but then still coming back to your Instagram, mindlessly scrolling through your feet when you're bored, and accidentally seeing a picture of somebody else that has your dream body, and then compare yourself as to why you don't have the same body as her. Even though it was very obvious that that Instagrammer used Facetune to warp her waist to make it slimmer. I'm sick of the way people are saying that they're so committed to changing their lives, but they're still allowing
and pettiness to sabotage their progress. And this goes the same with leveling up your income or your career opportunities. While being very clear that you are going to start building your YouTube channel, you then try to flex your progress by asking every one of your family, friends or distant acquaintances to please support your channel when you know that these people don't truly want the best for you. And you want acceptance and validation from these people who I guarantee most likely don't have acceptance or validation for themselves. Hence, that's why they didn't accept you before you leveled up in the first place. If you are still holding on to all these pettiness while you are trying to make more money, while you are trying to build a new life for yourself, you are literally going to put yourself in a hamster wheel where you do make progress, but then you slip back. And how annoying it is that you already took those steps, but you're just held back by these little actions that stops you from reaching that tipping point in your life. If that validation doesn't come from within you, it's going to be very hard for you to stick through the times where the results are not showing you what you expect. So if you want to level up in every area of your life, you want to be building your high paying skill sets privately. And even if you win or don't win, you don't have to actually be the one to share the news, but let your results speak for itself. Therefore, the most crucial action that you're going to take is to deep clean and actually get rid of every distracting sources that don't get you to your desired reality. In my case, it was permanently cutting ties with my Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and even WhatsApp account. Building my dream life does not involve me sharing to any distant acquaintances what my business is or what I'm up to with life, just for them to get envious and project any sort of skepticism or negativity onto me. Building my dream life does not involve me using Facebook or even WhatsApp to be involved in any social groups or anything that does not correlate to me adding value to my audience through YouTube. This is how relentless I am. And I'm asking you if your dream reality is important enough for you. Are you willing to make this temporary sacrifice to gain every single thing that is waiting for you to just align yourself to receive it? So again, I'm not saying temporarily delete your personal Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp or LinkedIn so that you can concentrate on yourself for six months and then perhaps go back and install it when you make the progress. I'm saying delete it permanently if it doesn't bring you to the result that you want. Do not keep friendships, distant acquaintances, contact list or anything that is not relevant to your future self. This is really important. Step two, you're going to write down everything that you wish to create in present tense as if you already have received it and thank the experience that brought you there. That's right. Instead of writing down in bullet points, I want to earn 250 grand per year or I wish to be with my dream man who I'm absolutely in love with and he's also very in love with me. Write it as if you are now living that life today. So an example of this would be, I'm so thankful that today I'm finally in a place where I have this beautiful and meaningful relationship with myself. This relationship with myself then multiplies in every area of my life, such as my fitness, my mental health, my friendships, my romantic partner, and even my business. As a result of me knowing how to love myself every day, I'm able to inspire my viewers to also do the same. They appreciate what I have to offer. And as a result, my YouTube has exponentially grown. Not only that, my income has exponentially increased three times more than it ever did because I finally know how to to respect myself and my time because I'm so confident in my ability to earn money in the exact way that adds value to people's lives. My man is also on the same caliber as me. We are compatible on every level. We have meaningful conversations, countless spontaneous laughters, awesome sex, and we know exactly what we have to do to achieve our goals individually, but also come together to create such meaningful and loving experiences. Most of all, I'm so thankful for my youth and the body that I have today. I have to be honest that without this beautiful beautiful body, it will be harder for me to cultivate confidence in my everyday life. Despite the fact that I get to eat every single thing that I love in the right portion, my body still remains fit, strong and slim because I know how to mindfully eat and I also know how to consistently work out without ever getting too tired. This whole balanced approach works so well for my life that I'm just so thankful to the universe for guiding me to take all the right steps that leads me to a life where wealth is not only defined by my bank account figures. I'm so happy to be this person. I'm so happy to have this life. And if there are ways that I can have more, please show me the way. So I know that this is a bit long, but for me personally, I've experienced times where I've only chased the bank account figures, but every single area of my life would spiral as a result of me just wanting that one area of success. Knowing how to enrich yourself every day, regardless of where you are at, is a much
much wealthier way to approach life. And the most interesting thing is that when I said five years ago, I want to build a business that makes $2 million per year, I had no idea what $2 million could truly buy for my life. I just assumed that because I have $2 million, I could buy a house in the exact suburb that I want to live in and I'll be so happy to live there. Or because I have $2 million in my bank account, I could probably fly business class everywhere, travel wherever I want to go, meet my dream partner, buy all the clothes I wanted to wear. And while of course $2 million can buy you that, but I've never thought about cases where maybe to get to $2 million, I'll have to scale my business and scaling comes with increased cost. Maybe with $2 million, there'll be more people and complications in my life for me to deal with. The fact that I didn't even have $2 million, there were still a lot of people trying to leech off my skill set. Because I never considered those things, I would put that one goal on such a high pedestal that I would dim my own power to do anything to be closer to that goal. Instead of thinking that when I make $2 million, I'm going to allow myself to feel rich from within, I want you to look at your bank account and be like, this doesn't define me. I'll choose to work with what I have today and I'm going to put myself on the pedestal and make sure that my inner well-being comes first, then the outer success second. Step three, you're going to take incremental actions that match your ideal self privately. Now in this section, I'm really going to emphasize incremental actions and privately because you are going to disappear from every social group, WhatsApp group or anything that doesn't relate to your dream goal and silently work on your mindset, your subconscious belief every single day relentlessly. When you embody the dream goal state silently, there is no skepticism, judgments, doubts or anything contradicting that can be projected at you. You are now at a place where you have sacred boundaries and you really choose yourself first. So let's just say you really want to build a business that turns over $2 million in profit per year. The approach that my old self would have taken is to number one, find people that I think are really, really successful and network with them. Two, I might go and join a public speaking community so that I could gain validation from my already great public speaking ability and believe that somehow I'm going to land a TED gig from me joining a public speaking group. And three, think of the perfect product that I can sell that will land me high paying clients or charge them $12,000 per head and hopefully just find a few number of these people until my business reaches $2 million profit. While this way could work for other people, I highly recommend that you don't take this approach and this is why. If you are living every day to gain something out there without becoming the person who is aligned to keep the results that you've built, it's going to be a very painful life in the long run. While I didn't build a business that made $2 million in profit, Profit, there were other things that I didn't believe I could achieve that I did achieve and once I got it I literally sabotaged myself from keeping that thing and the reason being is because if you truly already had two million dollars in profit and you are happy about it you are going to be still you're not going to need validation you're not gonna have a yearning to make a lot of friends you're not gonna go out there to flaunt your wins you're gonna feel content and happy from within yourself you're gonna use that two million dollars profit to invest back into nurturing your soul and nurturing Nurturing your soul is usually a silent practice where only the people that deserve your time and energy get to be in your space. So if you are already living that life, you want to start embodying the characteristics of a person who is content and wealthy from within. She feels like a $2 million boss babe. The opportunities come to her. She's sitting there beautifully like a queen, nurturing her mind, nurturing her soul every day with the money that she has. This is literally the mindset that I want you to embody. So now I'm going to go into the nitty gritty of which step steps you need to take in order for you to feel self-respect and high value. Number one, this $2 million per year babe is going to know how to mindfully eat because if you cannot even control your food portion without counting your calories, without using an app to track what the hell have I eaten, how are you going to control every other area of your life? And I'm not exactly saying that control is a good thing, but I'm saying that the discipline to stay mindful is so important. If you know how to communicate with your body and you know when to stop eating, what does that say to yourself? that you love yourself enough to stop eating when you are almost full. And when you apply this principle in every other area of life, for example, when you make a lot of money and you're saying to yourself, I'm content with how my business is growing. I don't need to hire another marketing expert to tell me how to scale 10 plus. I'm content with myself right now so I don't have to run anywhere while this phase of my life is still transforming. And it all starts with the basic things like food intake. If you can master just the food intake portion, then you can master the bigger areas of life. Step two, you're going to choose a workout routine that nurtures your soul and prioritize that. Back in my early 20s, I would be obsessed with looking at Thai celebrities. And as you may know,
know, Asian celebrities have a very particular beauty standard. And for Thai people, being slim is an absolute must. So what I would do is choose a workout routine that will get me the slim body. Instead of choosing the workout routine that actually supports my current lifestyle and helps me grow incrementally. So when I first got a personal trainer at around 25, I wanted that personal trainer to help me lose 10 kilos in about two to three months. And she says it's possible. What we would do is lift weights. And I was able to deadlift from 30 kilos to 70 kilos within two months. And while I felt ecstatic and really confident in myself during those time periods, there came a time where I realized that this lifestyle is not compatible with how I'm living at that time. I soon lost my strength and gained back all the weight because I was in such desperation to achieve a celebrity body figure. It was so hard to not accept my current environment or accept my current progress and try to push myself to the extreme. They communicate to myself that I don't have any love for myself and that's why I couldn't sustain the result. So as impatient as you are with achieving your next goal, I want you to really come back and prioritize those boring little workouts that you can do when you are depleted so that on the days you truly burn out, instead of you lying down your bed to scroll through your Instagram feed, you are using those precious 30 minutes to come to your yoga mat and stretch, do a light workout, do something to keep the momentum going regardless of how tired you are. The key to success is consistency and if we're constantly doing extreme things and not being able to sustain that extreme activity, we will then crash and see ourselves as low value because we'd rather be lying down on the internet than being on our yoga mat to just connect with ourselves and nurture our soul. So please, before you try to start your six-figure venture or your thriving YouTube channel, choose a workout that nurture your soul so that you can keep building on this foundation and nurture a positive momentum within your body. When you are fit, beautiful and slim, you feel like you can wear anything and feel pretty. You feel smarter when you talk on camera. You feel great when you meet people. And all this takes is for you to prioritize nurturing your souls, hence choosing an enjoyable workout that you can sustain over a long period of time. And three, you're going to normalize having a positive inner self talk. Now I'm not saying that you have to sit all day long to affirm for one or two hours a day. What I'm saying is that choose an affirmation routine that works for you. For example, an affirmation routine that works for me is when I wake up first thing in the morning and the last thing I do before I go to sleep. And the reason being is because I just don't feel like sitting down at 12 p.m. to affirm that I'm positive, I'm beautiful and I love myself. At 12 p.m. I'd rather be eating or filming my videos and that might be the same for you. So you want to find a right time to saturate your subconscious mind with all the beliefs that bring you closer and closer to your goals. At first I started listening to self-love affirmations while I was getting ready to film my makeup videos. I wanted to feel pretty so what I would do is repeat in my mind, I love every single part of me. I love my body. Every part of me is beautiful. I accept myself exactly for how I am. I am radiant. I am glowing. And lo and behold, just a month later, I suddenly lost these baby fats on my cheek. And I actually did look more glowing and radiant on camera while I was applying makeup. And that is because I was normalizing feeling glowing, feeling radiant. I then started to do these practices while I'm in a drowsy state. While I'm in a state where I can't be bothered to think about anything except sleep. So I would turn these track on. And this whole repetition of you are the best. You always get what you want. You can overcome any difficult challenges. You are chosen. You are beautiful. You are a winner. You win at everything that you do. You always get the best treatments. You have the power to create your dream life. You have the power to change your story. Once these statements start to override my old thought patterns, which were, everybody's out there to get me. Everybody's envious of me. Nobody supports me. This world is unfair. Why does she get what she wants? Why can't I get what I want? Now my day-to-day -day decisions are completely different. Different. Instead of me wanting to go and lie down and listen to a tarot reader talk about my destiny, I would rather create my destiny by filming a YouTube video. And instead of me filming just short contents, I decided that I want to add true value to my audience and take the time to film long form contents. So as you can see, your decisions are really influenced by your subconscious belief. The more you see yourself as precious, as having a high potential, as a diamond, your actions will automatically be congruent to that version of you. And that all starts from you just listening to the right affirmation tracks and saturating your subconscious 
next mind with the right thoughts. So again, going back to this $2 million babe, yes, she will still work on her sales script. She may work on her marketing skills. These are high paying skill sets that she will be working on. But before she even goes to that stage, she gets her core foundation right, which is how to stop eating via stop consuming when you are almost full. Choose a workout rhythm and a lifestyle that nurtures your soul over hitting insane targets. And make sure you saturate your subconscious mind with all the right thoughts before you take any day-to-day -day actions. Because once your foundational state is aligned, every single marketing material, thumbnail design, sales scripts, conversations with potential clients, and all these things will be aligned to the highest version of you. And therefore, you only attract people that elevate your inner state. And finally, step four, you're gonna keep leveling up after you've achieved your big win. Now you wanna make sure that you sustain that momentum and you keep going up and never return back to your hypocritical self. So I'm going to give you an example. When I first launched this YouTube channel on January the 7th, I actually did expect at the back of my mind that I would instantly go viral. So my mindset was oriented towards how can I gain 1 million views on my shorts instead of how can I become the content creator who normalizes getting those kind of views. And even on a logical sense, I know all of this, but I wasn't fully embodying that state till later half of January. And that's why the first three steps are so important because it's oriented towards becoming and sustaining the new version of you without ever going back despite your fluctuating outer results. In my reality, it took me about two months to gain 300 subscribers. And you can view this in multiple ways. You can say that because I've batched so many contents behind the scenes. I deserve so much more subscribers than this. But surprisingly, I honestly didn't think that way. The way that I thought was, damn, people actually do resonate with my long form content. So what I'm saying is that your perspective after the six months win can really impact whether you continue to grow or whether you would dip in the next six months after that. So let's just say you achieve one extremely big win. You do happen to turn over that $2 million business. Now what? And that's the thing. You never want to be in a position to ask yourself, now what? I knew exactly what this felt like when I signed my first client. It took so much effort for me to get myself out there on LinkedIn at the time. Now what? So before I even launched this channel, I knew the exact traps that I had to avoid, which was the now what? What do I do next? And the thing is, once we start to feel bored or lost or confused and ask ourselves, now where do I go next? We'll then revert back to our old ways in a very small and subtle way. We might go back and say, you know what? Because I already achieved my outer results. Let's just neglect all these boring practices that got me to where I am. These are the exact traps that you must not fall into once you achieve the big results. Hence, that's why you want to build an inner identity that you are normalizing every day rather than trying so hard to attain something outside of you without becoming a new person. So this is how you're going to make the greatest comeback of your life within six months. As you can see, this plan is not a generic month one, we're going to do this. Month two, we're going to do this. And month three, we're going to do this. But I'm allowing you to design how you want your life to turn out the next six months. And there is no one fixed plan. However, there is one core universal foundation that everybody should build in order for them to sustain the bigger results later on. And that core foundation is the self-belief, how you see yourself, how you make your decisions, staying congruent to your dreams, eliminating every source of distraction and permanently cutting ties with your hypocritical self. Again, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you do, please feel free to subscribe and let me know what kind of content you wanna see. I'm excited to grow on this journey with you and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.